What's going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson back in studio at the Big Dog Podcast with my man, Jonathan Mack. What's going on, Jonathan? Nothing much. How you doing? Man, I'm doing good. I'm doing pretty good. I'm going to sip this coffee real quick, though. Oh, man. So, <laughs> look, I um, was driving down the road the other day and needed to get gas. And the tire pressure light came on on, like, my rear right tire. I'm like, that's weird. You know, it was like, all right, because I always kind of like get nervous when those lights come on. Like, oh, crap, did I hit something is just going to escalate quickly and just be completely flat. Or is it just a little low for whatever reason? Because um, you never know if the light comes on. I don't know if the trusty forerunner has the tire lights or you just get a flat. Uh, my forerunner just hit 301,000 miles. So it just goes flat. You don't all, get a warning. All my lights are on. I get concerned when one goes off. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. Why is that check engine light on? Okay, that's fair. That's fair. So a little bit of a different setup right now um, than what I'm <laughs> working with. So lights pop on, I get concerned. Lights go off, you get concerned. Yeah. I remember that. That's a good time of life, though. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so anyway, this tire light comes on. I said, all right, it's cool. I'm going to the gas station anyway. I'm going to fill up the tank and apparently fill up the tire. No big deal. So I pull up to the gas station. There's somebody, um, you know, in, in front of both of the, the the pumps at our local Wawa here in the county. And, you know, they leave. So I get gas first. I fill up, slide over there to put air in the tires. So filling up the thing. And I love Wawa's air pumps because they got the little meter on the thing. It's free. Never understood having to pay for air when you go to these places. But anyway, it's free. Works out real nice. It's quick. You're not sitting there. Tires going flatter as you're trying to fill up air in it. Anyway, fill up the tires. It's all good. As I'm wrapping up, I hear this. Excuse me, sir. I turn around, and there's this Jesse Pinkman looking dude sitting there with this sketch white van off to the side. And I saw the van when I pulled up and noticed there was somebody sitting in the passenger side, but nobody in the driver's side. I'm always kind of paying attention to, like, what's going on around me. And so I did notice the man when I pulled up. Um, so it's like, excuse me, sir. I turn around. I'm like, yeah, what's up? Hey, can you, can you, my, my van's dead. Can you help me jump it? And I'm like, this is kind of a weird spot to be parked in your, I go into immediate, like, okay, Jesse, like you about to rob me. Like what's, what's about to happen. I mean, he was a little rough looking dude. Um, whatever. And then I meet like, where's dude in the, passenger seat he was still in the passenger seat of the van and so you know he needs to jump his vehicle so very quickly i'm assessing the situation I'm like all right if this goes sideways can i whoop these dudes ass like and i was like yeah i could take jesse i don't really know what's going on with the dude in the back but i gotta assume if anybody's seen breaking bad most of jesse's crew i'm comfortable whooping their ass okay um so, and I'm a lover, not a fighter, but you know, if it's fight or flight, I ain't one to run really. So it's going to be what it's going to be. So anyway, I'm like, yeah, man, you got, you have jumper cables. Sure. No problem. He's got them. I pull the car over Jonathan Mack. I pull my car over. He's got the hood popped on his van. I pull my car up and I realize in that moment, I don't know how to open the hood of my car. <laughs> I'm like, shit. I'm I'm inside, reaching down to the left, reaching down to the right. I'm looking at the door panel. Like, how do you open the hood of this car? So now I'm feeling real embarrassed. I'm feeling real embarrassed. I'm a grown ass man. Got these two dudes. They need their van jumped. They've asked me. I slide over in the car, and I just look like the typical dude. Like, just complete disconnect, no sense of reality. It was real embarrassing. So I'm sitting there, and I walk out. I said, man, I can't find the thing to, to open the, the hood. So he starts to peek in my car. I said, no, 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 I'll get it. And um, looking around, I'm over in the front. I'm reaching in the grill, trying to find a button or a latch or something. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how to open the hood of this car, Jonathan. So. I know this dude is thinking all kinds of crazy stuff about me in this moment. And I'm actually thinking if he didn't ask me to help with the intent of robbing me, he 100% now believes that he can rob me and take me. 
because I'm going to end up myself in that white van because I'm the dude who can't even pop the hood of his car. I said, man, this is kind of silly. I'm going to have to Google this shit. And sure enough, I Google. I'm in the car. I sit down and I Google how to open hood on, I type in my car. And sure enough, way underneath, like the, down by the pedals, all right, but it's tucked up underneath, is this huge red lever. Huge. Now, you can't see it from anywhere in the car because that wouldn't, that wouldn't look nice. So the Germans, I guess, like in my truck, boom, it's easy. Hood lap. Yeah, pull that thing. Makes sense. Thank you, America. The Germans, no. They, they don't want you to see that. It's not aesthetically pleasing, I guess. So they hide this massive bright red lever up underneath the, the pedal area. Okay? That, that's my technical term to where your feet go. The pedal area. Uh, I pull that thing. Boom. Hood pops. No problem. Open the hood. Man. It's nothing but plastic. The whole thing's covered and clean. I don't even know where this battery's at. There's one little red cap. I was like, let me flip this thing. And that's where, you know, you hook up one of the, the connectors to, and then there's like a ground to hook up the other one, I guess. Man, he hooked that van up, fired it up, disconnected, closed it up. I got out of there. I was so ashamed. I was so embarrassed. This junk's hysterical because it, it was such a cycle of events where it was just, just from me trying to put air in my tire to excuse me, sir. I'm like, is Jesse Pinkman trying to rob me? Let me help him out. I feel comfortable in this situation. Now I look like an asshole for prejudging that I'm going to get robbed. Now the universe is coming back around and making me look like a punk because I don't even know how to open the hood of my car. You following me? Yeah, seems like a funny tale of events. This is a situation, Jonathan. This is an entire event. And so I felt like, hey, you know, I, I, I've done this. I'm embarrassed. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. My question is, did you put on music? Like when you drove away or did you just ride away in silence and contemplation? Uh, there was no music. I didn't think so. It was just, and I'm always, I always have music playing. I always have music playing. And it was just dead silent and me playing back this situation in my mind. And I said, you know what you have to do? You got to tell your friends about this and embarrass yourself. So I did. I put a post on Facebook. People have been roasting me all week. It's really funny. Um, and so I thought it'd be a funny story to share with the the podcast. And so I, I hope you guys enjoy my pain of me being a dumbass. Um, I would highly recommend in, in fairness, my wife, right. Always trying to look out for me. She responds to the post and she goes, babe, you have other great qualities. Handyman and mechanic is not one of, are not any of them. Um, but she tells me I have other great qualities. So I will accept that from my wife. Thank you, babe. But I, I would highly recommend, ladies and gentlemen, to avoid the shame that I have felt. If you get a new car, new to you, brand new, doesn't matter, new to you, and you're not familiar with it, at the very least, know how to pop the hood. You know, that seems pretty standard. Or alternatively, you get a 2003 Forerunner that you can abandon on the side of the road <laughs> if anything goes wrong whatsoever because it has no value. <laughs> you're just leaving it. You're like, well... I guess we've gone as far as we can go together. Yeah. I'm just going to leave you here. And a good captain goes down with this ship. So you got to, you got to ride it till the wheels fall <laughs> off. Nah, man, it's a trusty, trusty truck, man. It's been good to you. Uh, 300,000 is no joke. I think my, my uncle was in town the other day. He has a Toyota truck and I, I think he said he has like 480,000 miles on that thing. I mean, that's the goal. Cause I'm not buying a new one. I mean, it's crazy. And he, yeah, he's got like four, I think he said 480. I thought he was approaching half a million miles. That's a lot of miles. A lot of gas. Yeah. But I remember, I mean, he's been driving that truck around since I was like a kid. Yeah. This, this forerunner that I drive also has no AC. So. Oh, brother. Yeah. No, now I, either, now so. I know he got the hair up. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be doing that. So anyway, you know, it's, it's a funny thing. Know yourself. People are like, Josh, when you bought the car, you didn't pop the hood, look under the hood. I wasn't worried about what was under the hood. Just paid for the thing. That, I shouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, if it's something's messed up, I'm going to bring it back to this dealership. I'm worried about the inside. I'm worried about the outside. As far as under the hood, what? Do, uh, I felt it was better to not insult the people by having them open the hood and me walk around and look at it like I know what the hell I'm looking at. I know that I put gas in the back. Somehow it gets up to the front. Combustion takes place, I think. And then shit goes out the exhaust. 
and we move on down the road. That is my super technical, again, you know, explanation of how a car works. And I don't know that any of it's accurate, but in my mind, that's how it works. Just like the little cars when you're a kid, you pull them backwards, you let them go. I don't know how it all works. Probably a spring or something. But all I cared about was pulling that joker back, seeing how far I could get it, racing them. So all this to come back around to one embarrassing story for me. I hope you got a laugh out of it. A lesson for everybody. Know how to pop the hood in your car. Know how to open the gas tank. I do appreciate the people who've come on there and put in the comments their silly, embarrassing moments of like just basic stuff that they should have known. Um, one of Devin's cousins, she commented on there years ago, her mother had come to visit her and her husband and um, she needed to vacuum something. She couldn't figure out how to turn on the vacuum. And she was so embarrassed. She didn't, she was too embarrassed. She didn't want her mom to know that she had cleaning people that come to the house. So she didn't even know how to turn on the, the vacuum. And then um, somebody else had commented on there. I think it was my father-in-law actually, about how they had uh, rented a vehicle to take a bunch of kids to camp or whatnot. Could not for the life of him figure out how to open the, the gas cap to put gas into the car. Um, and that actually happened to me the first time I put gas in this car also. Damn, this car is giving me a time. It took me about 15 minutes to figure out how to put gas in it. Sounds relatively difficult. It, it It's not now, but it's um, when you, you know what you don't know. So all that to say, guys, when things look good, it doesn't necessarily mean it's good. When things look bad, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. You know, I made a, a characterization in the moment with Jesse Pinkman and the crew. And if you don't know Jesse Pinkman, highly recommend you take some time to watch Breaking Bad. Great, you know Breaking Bad, right? Yeah, I'll probably just throw a screenshot up on yeah. the video for it. It's one of the greatest television shows of all time, and Pinkman is just a phenomenal character. I mean, the dude, it's just incredible. And so, if you're missing the reference, I apologize, but it was the first thing I thought of in the in the moment with them. And so, what looked like man could be kind of a sketch situation. It, it really wasn't. It's just a young dude needing help. His vans were. He's just trying to go work and do his deal, right? Um, and I think a lot of that comes back around to, to social media and stuff. And it's, you know, people are showing you guys, you know, that, that highlight reel and, and the good stuff. And pe- people will message me, you know, cause I try, I'm traveling a lot, you know, recently it's like, Oh man, so lucky. That's so cool. You know, where are you at now? What's going on? I wish I could do that all the time. And I'm like, look, this shit's difficult. Like I, I might be showing some fun stuff. I need to start showing some more stressful stuff because for every you know, cool thing I show, there's probably about 30 really shitty things going on in the background, you know, that we're working with and and dealing with and, um, and handling. And so I just don't feel like anybody wants to hear that crap. So I don't ever, you know, put it out there or whatever, but at the same time, I don't want there to be a misconception where you're wondering like, man, why can't I just catch a break? Why can't things kind of speed up for me and, and, and be better, do better. I got chaos, 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 things I'm dealing with, you know, all the time, um, or just troubles that come my way and, and problems it seems like, or, you know, my girlfriend cheated on me for the fifth time, or, you know, my husband left me or, you know, my kids are, are bad, it, you know, all this stuff. Man, everybody has stuff. Don't get yourself worked up, depressed, you know, going crazy because you think, oh, man, their Instagram is just, man, they're just, they're just having so much fun. It's so easy. It's so smooth for them. The reality is everybody's got stuff. You got stuff. I got stuff. Jonathan Max got stuff. Like Everybody's got stuff. Right. And so don't don't get yourself feeling a, a type of way. Don't get um, to that comparison game where you're comparing what you got going on to what somebody else has has going on because you only see what they're showing you. So you're not getting a true comparison. There's no need to compare anyway. You got to dial in and focus on you. And so, you know, just because things look awesome doesn't necessarily mean it's just perfectly awesome. And the same thing, the flip of that though, you feel like everything in life is, is bad or rough or a struggle. It's never as bad as it seems. And it sure as shit is never as good as it seems. All right. The reality is somewhere there in the middle. So if you're out there getting some wins, but you're also having some struggles, 
It's not just you. That's everybody. The path to improvement is going to require you to get over obstacles and deal with pain. And honestly, the most successful people I know, the most successful people I know that are grinding and, and working through stuff, it's the pain and the trials and the, the struggles that prepare them for the wins. That's what makes it worth it. If it was all smooth and it was all easy, right, we, we would stop. We would stop and just settle, right? The easy path isn't the path that gets you the furthest, whether it's your personal life, professional life, whatever. That easy one is not the one that gets you the furthest. There's going to have to be bumps in the road. So if you're listening, you're like, man, my shit is easy. Every day is simple. I don't have a, a stressor in my life at all. I'd push back and say, you kind of got to reevaluate some stuff. I wouldn't, I don't know that that's the, the, the best route. Maybe you're just indifferent. Maybe you just don't care about anything. But if you're working to improve, you're working to grow, there's going to be some challenges. Because when you're working, whatever facet of your life it is, there's going to be strain. And it's tough. So nothing's ever as good as it looks. And nothing's ever as bad as it looks either, guys. So remember that. Just find some balance. Just because Jesse Pinkman asked you to jump his truck doesn't mean he's going to try to throw you into, like, human trafficking. I mean, I know I'm not the typical probably guy to be profiled for human trafficking. You're not going to grab the 260 guy, right? And so, but it, just because a situation looks sketch doesn't necessarily mean it is. I'm not telling you don't be aware of your surroundings. You need to be. But also, don't get all stressed out when you think someone's highlight reel, if you will, is a hundred percent their reality. It's not, it's a highlight reel. All right. We appreciate you. Thank you for, for listening to the show, sharing the show. Um, we, we just, we're always excited to be in here. We got a fun lineup of guests it's kicking off next week that are going to be back in the studio with us and uh, remote. And so give us a holler, let us know what you want to hear about and learn more about. We're happy to help. Take care.